Well, if you're anything like me and you have to wear glasses and want to ride a snowmobile, finding a good helmet that stops this kind of fogging is a real challenge. I've gone through several different helmets in my time riding and the BVS2 from Skidoo really has proven to be the best for people who wear glasses, but it's not perfect. So today, I'm gonna to take a look at my helmet and tell you what I think of it for a person who wears glasses. So sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I'm gonna take a little break here at this rest section. It's really nice. Although the BB2S is kind of overshadowed now by the new Skidoo Oxygen helmet, when this helmet was released, it was revolutionary and Skidoo claimed it would solve a couple major problems that most snowmobilers had. The first is vision. So it has a very, very wide field of view available to the rider. And that's right in the acronym. So BV2S stands for Bombardier Vision and Ventilation System. And I always get the acronym mixed up, so if I do, <laughs> I'm sorry. But the second part of the acronym, the ventilation portion, is really what attracts a lot of people to this helmet. And that is the internal venting system that's more like a fighter, uh, I guess a fighter planes helmet than it is like most traditional helmets. Now when I first started snowmobiling, I thought I could just use my motorcycle's full face helmet. I had many of those and they worked very well for me. But I found out quickly that motorcycle helmets and snowmobile helmets are much different. And where they really differ is in uh, their ability to manage the ventilation of the helmet. So most motorcycle helmets, uh, the ventilation is really there to kind of cool your head on hot days. Whereas on a snowmobile helmet, it's really about evacuating your breath out of the helmet so it doesn't fog up the visor or glasses. Now, I quickly started looking for a good snowmobile helmet. And most of the helmets at the time relied either on like a neoprene skirt that would fit up against your nose and you would mold a small piece of uh, aluminum, I guess, on the top of the bridge of your nose to try and seal your upper part of your face from your breathing components, right? It didn't really work for me. I have a very small nose bridge and I would always still get air coming up and my glasses would fog. Now, next there are some that have a separate component. So Skidoo's Modular 3 and Modular 2 have like a fighter mask that snaps on the helmet and um, they work reasonably well, I suppose, but they're a little bit cumbersome. Now, when I saw the BV2S for the first time, I really liked the look of it, and it's a very subjective opinion. Some people think it looks ridiculous, other people think it looks futuristic, and I'm one of those people, I like the look of it. But the breath box inside that soft silicone mask is what attracted me to that. I'd done a lot of pesticide spraying in my youth, and I was used to a half mask, very similar to that, and I knew that that would fit really well around my nose. So I ended up purchasing one of these about four years ago, this helmet. And overall, I've been reasonably pleased with it. So why don't we take a look at all of the different components of this helmet and the different features in a little more detail. And then I'm gonna tell you how I think it works with glasses, whether it's a benefit, whether it works well, um, and, and my experiences with it with glasses. So let's start, we'll take maybe a look at the visor component first. Now the visor on the BB2S is really, really good. And you can buy it in one of two forms. You can either buy it um, non-heated or like mine where it actually has uh, heat ribbons around the perimeter of the visor to keep it fog free on really cold days. And like all snowmobiles, it has a little plug here, or snowmobile helmets, it has a little plug that allows you to plug that into the snowmobile and keep the visor fog free. Now, optically, it is amazing. When I have the 
have it nice and clean and it's sealed nice and tight and the helmet's working well, the vision from this helmet is amazing. And uh, I'll try to show you that here, what it kind of looks like from the inside. Now the helmet is tipped up a little bit, but you can kind of see there's great peripheral vision so people can't sneak up on you as easy as other helmets. Now, there are a couple things that I don't like about the visor. The first one is um, these, these uh, screws or mounting fasteners here, I find they loosen quite a bit on this helmet. Now, what Skidoo has done is they, they've sort of included a slot in there that I guess is supposed to fit a quarter down in there. But what I find is a quarter is not quite big enough. It's almost designed for a Canadian loony or a Canadian $1 coin or even a $2 coin fits much better in there. And for me, that's not a problem. I always have a loony or a toonie kicking around. But if you're in the United States or maybe in other countries that don't have that same size of, of currency, well, I think you're going to strip those little slots out fairly quickly. So one thing I have to do before every ride every day is just make sure that those are nice and tight. I have had one actually vibrate out. I had to buy an extra one before I realized that that is a problem. Now, the other thing that I don't like about it, and I've heard and I've read that this is fairly common, is right at the front of the visor, right in here, it's cracked. And it cracked almost within the first month of use with this helmet. Now it's never spread all the way up. It's only cracked a certain way, but you know, it's a very heavy visor on here and I would have expected it to be a little bit more durable. Now, when it's in its down position, it locks very well if the mouthpiece is nice and secure, if it's in, in sort of the right position. But I do find sometimes that that mouthpiece is a little bit hard to snap shut and you end up with a little bit more air penetration than you should have. But when it's set properly, I do find that it seals out probably 95% of the wind and it works really well. The helmet does come with some really nice features and some nice options that aren't necessarily related to the visor or the breath box. Now, this includes a drop down uh, visor, which works okay, but I do find sometimes it'll snap up on its own really, really quickly. It won't stay down, but it's all operated with your left hand too, so you don't have to ever take your hand off the throttle. It does come with a built-in LED light at the back, which I've never actually um, hooked up. It has a battery box inside the helmet, and it has a switch that's located just inside the visor right here but I've never really found the need for it. And it looks like a pain to get the actual battery tray out. So I've never ever done that. And it even comes with a small threaded mount here for a flashlight that you can mount on this side to look at maps at night if you're having trouble with your sled. It's kind of a gimmicky thing, I think, but it's all right. Now underneath it has an a apron that's built right in, a neoprene apron, right into the bottom of the helmet to keep cold wind from sort of creeping up under your chin. And the latching system is really good too. It's basically a ladder latch system that, you know, sort of snaps together like this. And then to get it apart, you just pull on the lever and it pulls apart. So there are some really nice features that are built into this helmet or options that you can buy, such as the flashlight. Um, they're somewhat subjective, uh, the value of them. I know the the actual drop down visor I use a lot, especially with the yellow tint that I have on this one. It really does highlight and contrast a lot of the moguls. Undoubtedly, the most unique feature of the BV2S is the breath box up front. And it swings open similar to a modular helmet swinging up and allows your face to talk to people. Now, the heart of the whole system is this rubber piece that fits around your face and it's adjustable with this knob on the outside here that moves the actual breath box in and out and you can even have some articulation up and down manually on the inside of this now it also uses inside here three different valves it's got two on the outsides here that draws air into the mask from 
the interior of the helmet. And as you exhale, it blows it out a third valve and out into atmosphere through the front nose piece. Now inside, you're gonna see that there's a sort of a white absorbent pad that fits in there. And that's to sort of absorb condensation. I don't really ride with this. I kind of leave it out. And I end up with icicles that do come out of the front of the mask, but it does work fairly well for me. Now, once it's adjusted, it does function reasonably well. Um, but uh, there are some issues with really cold weather with that valve in the front freezing shut. And it's actually recommended, I can't remember the temperature, but like minus 20 Celsius or something to actually pull that valve out of there and just allow air to freely move in and out through the front of the mask. Now, I never do that. I don't do a lot of things apparently. And I still have reasonably good success, but I do know if I stop on the side of the trail and flip the mask open for more than a few minutes, that valve will sometimes free shut. And I have to actually really blow to get it moving again. Just something to keep note of. Now this is the heart of the system. It's what's designed to keep your glasses from fogging and the interior of the helmet from fogging up. But it does take a little bit of adjustment and I'll talk about that in the fitment portion. It looks like my cat Nella is up here to help me with talking about the comfort of this helmet. Now once the helmet is on and adjusted properly, it's reasonably comfortable, but I wouldn't call this the most comfortable helmet I've ever had. Firstly, it is extremely tight to get my head in here. This is a large helmet and I have a pretty small head. But in order to get my head in here, it is a heck of a tight squeeze. And without a belly clava, it ends up folding my ears down and I can't ever get them back up. I mean, you're probably gonna wanna ride with a belly clava anyway, but it is certainly something to think about. And sliding the glasses in is also challenging because of the tightness of the padding on this thing. And as you ride through the day, the pressure that it pushes on the glasses can even lead to headaches. I've had it where it just doesn't quite fit right. Um, as I talked about in the breath box, the, the glasses themselves never really sit right on my nose with the breath, breath box in place. I can adjust them so they're reasonably comfortable, but they never really do fit quite right. And even the bottom apron here and the chin strap take a bit to get adjusted to a point where I feel like it's actually comfortable to ride in. Now, it's a quiet helmet and it's warm, there's no doubt about it, and it doesn't move around because it's so snug, but I wouldn't call it the most comfortable helmet I've ever had, especially because I wear glasses. I'm gonna show you how I put this thing on and make it work the best. So first thing is I put my belly clav on and I actually bite it with my teeth. This allows it to slide into the actual helmet without pulling the chin of the belly clav down. Now next I actually grab the apron and pull the apron down and position it properly around my chin and then roll the belly clava down to the bottom of my chin there so it fits right around and then I kind of move the helmet around until it fits really well and comfortable. I do up the chin strap and make sure that the rest of the belly clava fits nicely around the bottom of my neck. And next I'm going to fit my glasses. So I always slide mine in between my belly clava and my skin. I don't know if this is right or not, but this is how I do it. And I push the glasses sort of upwards that way so that they're not around my ears at this point. This way I can push the glasses up when I put the nose piece in. And what you'll see is I actually manipulate the nose piece so it forms a nice seal all the way around my, my face. And I adjust that with the knob. So it fits well, there's no leaks, and it, I make sure it doesn't roll underneath itself. Next, I slide the glasses down around my ears and settle it in behind the mask as best I can. And now, I can just pull down the actual visor, and it fits pretty good. You can kind of see it's, uh, it's not a bad looking helmet. As you can see, when it's on, it fits reasonably well. It's actually not an uncomfortable helmet at all. It's just, it's very tight to get it onto your head. 
and to get it sort of adjusted. And for me, the key is really lifting my glasses up and then fitting the mouthpiece every time I reattach it. Um, it really is um, critical to keep your glasses from fogging. And on really cold days, obviously, you're gonna wanna plug it in. So what are my thoughts on the BV2S helmet from someone who wears eyeglasses all the time? Is it a good helmet for a person who has eyewear? Well, I think it is. And the helmet itself is very well built. Visually, it, the, the lens and the screen are great. Your peripheral vision is fantastic. Optically, it, it's nice and clear and clean. And the electric visor works good at colder temperatures to keep the actual lenses from fogging up or icing. I like the drop down um, sort of fighter screen that fits in there with the tint in it. It helps a lot to see contrasts on cloudier days or dim light. And the breath box assembly does work fairly well for a person with glasses if you remember that it takes a bit of setup. Every time you open that face mask up, when you close it, you have to take the time to readjust it and make sure it seals really well around your face. Failure to do that will honestly just lead to fogging of both the glasses and the visor screen itself, and you'll become frustrated. And I've had this myself. You just open up your mask for a minute to, to talk to someone you're riding with, and then you snap it shut thinking it's gonna seal, and it doesn't. You have to actually stop and readjust the face mask and tighten it up and get a perfect seal, and then it works really well. And I mean, like every single other helmet that I've ever ridden with, once you open the mask up, you allow cold air into the helmet. When you do close the visor down, you're often gonna get some fogging until that temperature inside there equalizes with your body temperature. So I'm not even counting that. To me, that's just something that seems to happen with every helmet I've ever had. So would I recommend this helmet to someone with glasses? I think I would. I don't see any problems with it, and it's really the best helmet I've ever ridden with personally. Uh, until I try an oxygen helmet, I would say this does everything I needed to do to keep my glasses fog free. But you do need to understand there are some limitations and some adjustments required if you are gonna wear this helmet with glasses. So yeah, I would say it's really good. Well, that about wraps up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into riding with one of these helmets with glasses on. And uh, if you'd like it, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. If you have the helmet and you have any pointers that I've missed on this helmet, please put them in the comments down below so other people can learn from your experience. It's much appreciated. And until next time, I'm Dino. I really love the fact you stopped by the Tinker Shed even though I'm in my house today. And I hope to see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. Gotta go put this thing back in its case.